guys. So today I'm going to do a video on, this is going to be a little more than a how-to. This is actually going to show you the process of removing um, a not so great finished job and refinishing to make it great again. So this table is a customer's. I just got this in and it is less than desirable as far as the finish goes. And I'm sure the camera doesn't show half as bad. So I'm going to show you guys a close up of it after so that you can see but basically the person started to refinish this it's a solid oak table it's beautiful it's got claw feet um, and we're actually not touching the paint job below we're just gonna resurface the top can you hear that it's so bad the um, the polyurethane I think they used a spray and you can see it in patches <laughs> where it was sprayed and it's really rough and there's scratches and swirl marks and it's just not good so we're gonna take this and redo it and make this beautiful again so this is the current finish and as you can see with the close-up not beautiful right um like i said they started to do it and here is what i'm talking about see they started to poly got my 100 grit sandpaper that's what i'm starting with and my orbital sander and so we're gonna start with that grid. I don't feel like I need to go 80 because I hand sanded this little spot test with 100 and it came right off. So if you don't have to go with a super deep, um, heavy sandpaper, then start a little bit lighter. So I'm starting with 100 grit. Show you guys something because if, if you have ever seen these in a piece or you have seen that it's happening when you're sanding. This is something that took me a little while to figure out in the beginning why it was doing this. These are swirly marks from the orbital sander. And so it comes from two things, a rough grit sandpaper and pushing too hard. So keep in mind when you're sanding something, do not put so much pressure on it that you're digging essentially into the wood. And you gotta remember, if you're using an orbital, you are swirling, essentially. So if you put too much pressure while that orbital is swirling around, you are going to put in those crazy little swirly marks. So, see, they're all over this piece because apparently when the person who was refinishing was trying to get it to a point of stain, um, that's what happened. So just keep that in mind. If you see these, it's because you're pushing too hard and you're using the orbital so it's going to go ahead and and swirl and you don't want it to do that so your pressure should just be not light but not heavy so you know some pressure light pressure i, I talked say. about the swirly marks and as you can see i've sanded this down bare you can no longer see those swirly marks and that brings me to my next thought which is how do you get rid of them so i showed them to you and now i've gotten rid of them how did i do that well first thing I did was started with 100 grit sandpaper you may have to start rougher depending on your piece this is sanding up really easily so not a huge ordeal you can usually start with 80 I don't recommend much rougher than 80 um, you can but I prefer to start with 80 grit sandpaper in this case I started with 100 grit on my handy DeWalt orbital sander I don't know what I would do without this guy is awesome but um, start with 80 grit or i'm sorry 100 grit i started with on this table you can start with 80 grit and then work your way up to a finer grit you don't want to go too fine because then you start to close that pore of the wood and it makes the stain harder to take so i'll list this out in my video but i start with 80 or 100 i go to 150 and i go to 180 and that's where i stop and 180 will give you a really nice soft surface but it won't be so fine that it closes those pores. Anything finer like 220, 320, 400, all that, that's really a finished sanding and that's not something you want prior to stain. So keep with the 180 or 150, no lower. Your, your surface will be plenty smooth. It will get rid of those swirly marks as well. As you step up in the finer grit sandpaper, those swirl marks will come out and you'll be good to go. Hey guys, so as you can see, the table is completely sanded down bare. Did 100 grit, 150, and I ended with 180. Super smooth. So it is ready for its stain. As you can see, I have the table pulled apart. So if you have one of these that has the leaf in it, the best thing you can do is pull that table apart. You don't want to stain it or sand it together because you want to open it up and get inside to um, get on that edge and make sure that you get out 
um, any old stain um, or anything that might, you know, make that not look as good as it could look. So always work with the table open and then I'll keep this open for the remainder of the project until it's completely dried and then we'll go ahead and close it on up. But anyway, here we go. We are ready for stain. Okay, so we're going to stain. I've got my handy gloves. I've got my foam brush, my rags and my infamous java gel that i use for almost every project because it is my favorite it's made by general finishes gel stains have just become one of my favorites they do take a little longer to dry as i mentioned in my stain video before however um the durability the color um, the depth you get out of just one coat sometimes is just incredible so i completely love the general finishes java gel stain as i talked about in my stain video before when talking about different selections of stain. Um, I do use others, but this just rates on my number one. So I'm using this at the customer's request. So let's get to it. Java gel stain as you can see it's not gonna take probably but two coats to cover this table this is solid oak different woods take the stains differently and this one is taking it beautifully so a couple of things I wanted to point out when you're staining and you were watching me do it I was working rather quickly and one of the reasons is the heat Obviously when it's hotter out, it's going to dry faster and it will be much harder for you to wipe that back. You don't want that gel stain to sit on there. So the idea is to wipe it on with your whatever applicator you're using. In this case, it was my foam brush. And then I wipe it back with my clean cloth, constantly um, flipping over the cloth to make sure that I have it not saturated and stained and I'm getting a nice clean wipe. What will happen if you don't get a nice clean wipe is you will see the white marks all over the table. So I work pretty quickly, especially in the higher heat temperatures using the stain. Now I won't do any more today because it's going to be way too hot. I'll probably do my second coat. It's recommended 12 to 24 hours. It totally depends on your environment and your climate. With us right now being so warm, as I'm sure you can tell, I'm sweating and ready to call it a day at noon. Um, but uh, different temperatures will warrant different dry times this will be ready for a second coat by tomorrow morning and so i will give it a second coat then probably second and final because there's going to be no need for a third coat we want that grain to show through and that is the idea behind staining the wood is to give it that beautiful natural wood um, look and not cover that wood we want to enhance the wood so as you can see this is coming out beautifully I'm super happy all those swirl marks are gone and that's something you'll notice is that swirl marks will show up right away when you put your first coat of stain on you'll see if you've got swirl marks so it's kind of hard to see them when they're in that bare wood stage um, and so what happens sometimes is you'll see those and go, oh no, I've got them. Not to fret, you can still get them out um, by doing a light hand sand and then you'll just have to put another coat of stain and kind of blend it in. So keep that in mind. But uh, this is gonna be beautiful, ready for its second coat and I'm super happy with the way it came out. And a lot of that has to do with the product that I'm using. Again, it's the General Finishes Java Gel. You can't beat it, it's awesome stuff. So anyway, thanks you guys. We'll come back to it when it's on. So as promised, uh, it is the next morning. I have put on my second coat of stain. Super happy with the way it turned out. I don't see a need for any more coats of stain. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you don't want to cover the piece. You just want to enhance it. And we totally transformed it and changed the color. And Garbage Man is here. Gotta love Garbage Man on Friday. It's a busy day around my neighborhood. If it's not the blower or the mower, it's the Garbage Man or the Green Waste. So, apologize for the background noise. 
Anyway, I'm gonna flip the camera here in just a second and show you guys the end result of the second coat of stain. And then I'm gonna wait a full 24 hours before I go ahead and start to seal this. I really want that to dry and cure up before I go ahead and throw my top coat on it, okay? So, so here is the second and final coat. And I'm just doing a little walk around so you guys can see how pretty. See that beautiful wood grain has come through, but we have that dark Java color and it just came out so gorgeous. And so, like I said, I'm going to let this sit now and dry and wait for the uh, final polyurethane coats to be applied. Hi everyone, good morning. So, I am back in the workshop this morning to finish up this project. This beautiful dining room table has come out just great. I'm super happy with the way that the Java Gel has laid down. I did two coats. I've let it dry for 24 hours and we are now ready for our top coat. So, I'm going to show you guys how to do the first one and I'm gonna use the General Finishes Armor Seal. This is a great product for a really um, tough seal. I use it on uh, dining tables, tabletops, um, dresser tops, things like that. Anything that's gonna be a, a well-used surface, this is a great product. So we're gonna use this. The customer has requested semi-gloss, so we're gonna go ahead and do that finish. It comes in satin, semi, and I think a higher gloss. Don't quote me on that might be wrong but it does come in several finishes so check that out at general finishes website and you can figure which finish works best for you um, a couple things you're gonna need you're gonna need your handy tack cloth um, which I've already tacked mine down but um, I get these at Lowe's or Home Depot as I talked about in my stain video so you're gonna tack it and make sure that you wipe it nice and clean. No need to put a lot of pressure when you're using the tack cloth because it does have oils in it and you don't want to push. You just want to pick up any of that extra dust or lint. And then you're going to need your applicator. You can either use one of these guys, the foam brush, or this is a handy little trick. I know it looks kind of funny, right? It is one of those square staining pads and then it's covered in a nylon. Yes? A nylon a knee-high nylon I went to Walgreens and bought three for 99 cents these are awesome so it allows you to get a larger coverage surface I learned this somewhere online I don't remember where but I loved that tip and I use it often on these big flat surfaces it's great it alleviates um, those those lines or um, overlap marks that you can tend to get with the brushes and what I do is I've already poured out my polyurethane. It's on my um, paper plate here, which gives me a better surface to go ahead and dip this in. Obviously, I couldn't get this in a can. So I am ready to go, and I'm going to show you guys how to go ahead and polyurethane your tabletop. to mention when you're done with your first coat um, that's not it for you right we're gonna have to do a second and maybe a third coat depending on uh, what you want to do you do not have to throw out the applicators that you used and get a fresh one every time ha ha that's where saran wrap comes in handy I have a whole bunch of it the stuff from Costco in my garage and I wrap my stuff up even my foam brush applicator I wrap this up and then I put it inside if it's really hot because we don't want it to dry out and then when I'm ready for my second coat unravel I'm ready to go so you don't have to waste products um, and money for each application you can reuse now I would only reuse it that for that particular project after you're done with that project get rid of it um, but you can use this for first second and third coats okay hi everyone good morning so we are at the end of the project this is the last piece of the video that I wanted to show you guys and that is the end result we've put on three coats of the armor seal polyurethane it's come out just beautifully so I'm super happy with it I can't wait to call the client and tell her that her table is ready to pick up and I just wanted to thank you for following along with this video of the staining process 
and if you have any questions feel free to reach out and ask staining is a little different than the painting process and it's a little more intensive you might run into a few more issues um, it's you know it is not a difficult thing to do but there's just a little more involved and if you guys run into any problems rest assured I've probably run into them so I can probably help you along through the process if you have any questions but don't be afraid to do it you won't be disappointed with the results I'm certainly not um, every time I do a staining project it's just I love seeing the beauty of that wood come through and I'm gonna show you guys now the table so you can see for yourselves okay thanks so much for following if you have any questions please feel free to reach out thanks. okay so here is the final product this has our three coats of polyurethane in a semi-gloss it has come out so beautiful I'm just so happy with the results I hope the client is as well and I hope this video was helpful to you guys um, if you're starting a stain project you know this gives you guys from start to finish the process and the things you need to do it so if you have any questions you know reach out ask me and I'll be more than happy to help you along okay thanks you guys for watching